What up, what up, what up, internet? Who you are, where you be, where you at, what you see. This is Pop Cult Parent, the podcast you come to get your updated X-Men information. That's right, we're back at it again, recapping, talking about X-Men 97, episode 6. I'm one of your hosts, Mark M.F. Jones, and I'm joined by... This is Niels R.Y. What's up, Gavin? Welcome back, brother. What's good? X-Men in the house, let's go! <laughs> Mark, Mark, Gavin in the house. Gavin is having it. Gavin, so, so Mark, if, if, if I could take the mic for a second... Mm -hmm. There's a reason Gavin is celebrating and doing his Rocky stance because episode six, episode six should be called Gavin was right. So let me tell you why it should be called Gavin was right. He was right about Professor X coming back. If you remember, I think, was it last episode or two episodes yeah. ago? It was the last episode. Dude, it was two episodes ago. I said Professor X ain't eight. Yo, he done. It was two there. He was two there. Come so on. he got that right. He said Professor X coming back. And then Gavin was right about Storm getting her powers back. Gavin, look at Gavin's face. <laughs> Gavin was like, Storm's going to get her powers back like soon. He's yeah. like, I need a life death part two. The episode was called Life Death Part Two. <laughs> and she got her Bad powers 400, back. 400, dog. <laughs> and then the Come last on. one, the last one, not to like go to the end of the episode, Gavin in like maybe your first uh, X Men reaction, you said the big bad's going to be sinister. I said that. I said that too. I sure did. Gavin, how do you feel right now, brother? We'll talk I about the episode as a whole. But like so, the three big I, predictions that you threw out there were all I right. I had, so I'm, cu you know I'm curious I, on this your time. What's what's this? I, this I, I wish I had more props. paper to throw in the air. Because <laughs> look, we talked about it. We said it. We said <laughs> Mr. Sinister was going to be the big bad. We said Charles <laughs> Xavier was coming back. He just needs the. Uh, no one can hear him right now. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, Our no. audio listeners are like, "What is happening?" No, no. They, they, they couldn't hear all that. No, no, no the they... screaming. Once you scream, it sounds like oh. you've like fallen into. Okay, yeah, you on. use some hold of the bronze smoke, Gavin. Just like the chart can just. Let's go. <laughs> <That> was... <laughs> Nils, I told you, Sinister was the big bad. I told you it. that joint. You did. And you I did. said Charles Xavier is not dead. You said I that. Said that. And look where we at, man. In two, and, and no, in two fell swoops in one episode. That's exactly what happened, man. And yeah. and Professor X is still concerned about his X Men. Come on, yeah. yo! I thought he was gonna be like, you know what? I'm on a different plane. I'm on a different level. That still, he could not get away from, even if he wanted to. Professor X is back. We needed that, and it was awesome. Come on, babies. So let's jump into it, y'all. <laughs> let's let's jump into it. Let's start with like when the episode comes back on. I believe we are starting in the Shi'ar Empire. Kind of want to say a few things on like our return to the Shi'ar and meaning Lalandra. So there was a few folks that we were introduced to. We already knew Gladiator and the Imperial Guard. We seen them during the Phoenix Saga. We seen them a few times. If memory serves me right, we got introduced to Gladiator swooping down. Picking up Juggernaut by his Achilles. Oh, and yeah. And then swinging that sucker. Like, just threw him across <laughs> threw, the planet. Threw him into the horizon. He's just <laughs> gone, dog. No more. I don't even know if Juggernaut came back. And the entire few episodes before that, we were seeing Juggernaut demolish everyone and everything. And then this guy just swoops down, picks him up, throws him away. And we're like, whoever this man is, is a problem. I saw that and I was like, Gladiator is a problem we want no smoke with that dude gladiator really seemed like superman didn't he he just blew folks away like he was like the trusted guard gladiator was that guy that everybody was like peace and order will be kept if gladiator is right over there you know what i mean <laughs> i love yep. that like he he was solid from way back when to way back now that was that was a great transition it was a dope opening to, you know, the animation with that space battle was dope. And then you had Ronan in there. I'll say this is where my knowledge of the X-Men, like, is, you know, I was like, oh, cool. New people. Bird lady. <laughs> so <laughs> alien Death man. Bird. So we, I'm glad. You, so you mentioned Ronan. We all know Ronan because Ronan was in Gar the first Guardians of the Galaxy. But Ronan is a part of the Kree. 
So this was highlighting the Cree Shi'ar battle. I believe like it's always the Cree, the scroll, and the Shi'ar are like the thick, the big three mm -hmm. superpowers in general in the in the universe. So we were watching like the Cree and they were looking for the super intelligence, supreme intelligence. That's like the hive mind that has all the knowledge of the Cree Empire in this big old tube head, but it's actually technology. It's low key the internet, but you know, whatever. <laughs> like the supreme entity is the internet. Plug it in and, and plug it back. <laughs> I'm plug it, plug it back in. It ain't working. <laughs> and so Ronan is just like, he's like their guardian or whatever. Yeah. And okay. so we saw Death Bird. Death Bird is Alandra's sister. Ooh. I know it says that in the in the episode, but like that is a comic book character. Death Bird is yeah. like known in the Shi'ar Empire. And we also saw somebody else. And his name is Vulcan. Have y'all ever heard of Vulcan before? Spoilers. Vulcan, he was, he, he looks like emo, had like red powers and like the red psychic powers that he had when you look at it and he was like shooting stuff out of his hand. It kind of looked like Cyclops's optic beams. Mm. And that's intentional mm. because that's Cyclops' third brother. Wait. Oh, wait. Hold on. Summers. Hold on. Summers be out why, there. His name why is Gabriel he, Summers. Why didn't he do shit then? I mean, why didn't he do anything then? What? Because for years, you don't know who he is and what he does. And then slowly but surely, you find out that he's an Omega level mutant. And then he Omega takes level. over the Shi'ar Empire. And he is his arc is called Emperor Vulcan. And the X-Men have to go take him down. And Cyclops finds out he's his brother. Like at some point he finds out he's his brother. He's like, I have a third brother, which means when his ship got shot down and the, the Shi'ar took his parents, his mom was pregnant with his littlest brother who turns out to be an Omega level mutant and takes Ooh. over the Shi'ar Empire. The Summers family is ridiculous. That is what I'm trying Ooh. to tell y'all. Mm. That's why That's why Mr. Sinister wanted Jean and Cyclops' child because of that bloodline. So that Summers blood. That Summers yeah, blood. It wasn't even about boy. Jean. It was about <laughs> the Summers blood. They have three kids and all three kids turn out to be really strong mutants. That's mm. interesting. Either they belong together or they should have been very far apart from each other. Yeah. <laughs> Either way, it's a thing. Yeah. I, I do like, like, um, I'll say that, and we'll get into some of the, the show. Like, I love the insults on this show when Ronan's like, this pigeon, this pigeon, don't let this pigeon intimidate you. But uh, I, I know, I, I, when I saw it, when um, Deaf Bird, right? Yeah. When she steps on, I think it's Ronan's head and her, yes. her heel. The heel. I'm like, someone's enjoying this. Someone is getting off on this. One of those animators was like, just a little blood. Let, heel down. Down. let, it, let it bleed a little bit. <laughs> hey, Tom, you done with that? Yeah, 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 yeah. Just, just hold on, hold on. <laughs> I was like, yo, someone, because they didn't have to do that. And she didn't have to have the stilettos on. Someone was like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, man, we need those drawings. I was like, in a minute, in a minute. It's not even a full second. You really need to stop. They'll be finished when they're finished. All right. Fine hey, remind, did y'all see the Argyle? Y'all saw the Ar the new movie with Bryce Dallas Howard and uh, Henry Cavill and Sam Rockwell and Samuel L. Jackson? No. Argyle? No, yeah, it was good. Right? Yeah, I haven't seen they, that. It was good. If you like the Kingsman, you'll love that same director. But it also hinted at the fact that they were very obsessed with the heel twist, like head move that you were just talking about, Mark. Like. <laughs> And that's why I was laughing because I was like, yo, it reminded me of that exact part. Like it, it was very Dang. similar to both of them joining. Everyone got their thing and someone it was doing it for someone. No judgment. <laughs> <laughs> no judgment. It is what it is. No judgment here. <laughs> so just staying on this, there were some funny moments when when Charles got revealed to the rest of the Shi'ar Empire. And then mm -hmm. like Lalandra's like He's Terran, but I love him. <laughs> Daddy, I was I like, guess him, who's bro. coming to dinner? <laughs> hey, man, they are like, they're like, uh, what do they say? Your lover with his, uh, he's born on the wrong side of the stars. Yeah. His ghetto planet. I was like, yo, come yo, on. Bro, they the did part. say ghetto planet. That's that the hurt, problem. Bro. I was like, she called our whole universe ghetto. 
<laughs> and you know what? Planet. Compared to the Shi'ar Empire, it is a little ghetto. I kind of get it. I kind of get it. Because like, even, but I even, felt some type of way about it. Even when her and Charles were like walking, you could see people like, "Oh, look at that! Uh, hi, Your Majesty. How good to see you." Mm. Uh, dirty, mm. dirty, Taryn. Dirty. Bruh. Bruh, they were looking at him like, "Oh, where's your eyeliner, Charles? Like, oh, you out here all bald eyeliner? All bald. You ain't got and, no mascara all up on the side of your cheek? Ugh, I just see a wrong? bunch of them, just a bunch of them in a spaceship, and Charles comes by and they're like, "Roll him up." <laughs> like, hey, yo, new legs and no them. eyeliner is messed up, yo. How you get new legs and no eyeliner? You're not accepted. Like, wait a minute. They were looking <laughs> at him real sideways. Done. Yeah, yeah, done they did not. Done. They did not. Like, hey, she's still by her man, though. She's still by her man. She's like, yo, this is my man. Yo, she t she was <laughs> she like, did. she was like, she he saved me. He saved us from my evil brother. He stopped the phoenix. From mm -hmm. from take killing the universe, and he's a teacher. He's an educator. He does great <laughs> things in the community for oppressed people in his jankity planet. And I love him. And they all look like, Ugh. yeah, yeah, they did. They were I like, guess, yeah. I guess, if that's what you. There wasn't a small oh. in the room, <laughs> and there was a lot of people there, and then I was just like, mm -mm. Taryn <laughs> this and Taryn that. Uh, yeah, and you know, very nasty. you know, like they, they she took Charles to like a barbecue, and there was that one person who was trying to be nice. She's like, you know, I really like Taryn <laughs> music. Like, <laughs> like y'all dance really nice. Y'all Taryn dinosaur fossils to like use transportation. I find I um, think it's cool. I, I know think it's, it's polluting cool. your planet, but I think I get it. I get it. I think it's cool. Hey, can we just say, yo? I just want to give a shout out. Uh, Charles and Magneto must have went to the same swag school because these yeah. brothers are holding it down, dog. Come Yo, on. Charles is holding it down so well. She's like, you need new legs. You need new <laughs> legs, Lieutenant Dan. And we, like, you already handling business. We get you some new legs, dog. Hey, the shoulders were out, though. The shoulders were out. Y'all saw the shoulders? Like, hey, yeah. he was like, I've been wheeling this joint around for 20 years. Y'all gonna see these shoulders. Mm -hmm. like, Y'all gonna see them. Hey, he got nice posture and everything. He had them, he had them suckers out. Charles pull up game is crazy, yo. He's <laughs> Mark. Mark. <laughs> In the danger room, just like part. I mean, look, y'all, he's psychic. Mm -hmm. It's like what I said last time. He knows exactly what she likes. Exactly what she likes. She ain't never well, had that before. She came back all the way from the <laughs> other side of the galaxy to go check no, on him. And no, it was bull. like, forget all your people and stay with me. And she considered no longer being the empress of the Shi'ar Empire. <laughs> Yo, now, she's, she's like, like, I gotta think about live it. Live off your jankety planet. And no I mean, longer run one of the strongest superpowers in the universe. Did she I know? know, Charles? Did she know, or did she go along with it though? You see what I'm saying? Because I mean, she knew when Charles was using his powers versus when he wasn't. Hey, did Charles was Charles hip? Does or did it Charles matter? Get hip? Does it matter? <laughs> there was that scene where someone says something about Charles, and he's like, "Oh, he's referring to me as your pet." And he's like, oh. it's kind of appropriate. And she's like, she's like, easy boy, you can bark later. I'm like, yo, Charles. He knows exactly yeah. what she likes. <laughs> Charles, Charles is having a good old time in space. Dog. He is having a blast, bro. He don't want to go home. She's like, dog, he's like, my kids. He's like, they're killing my kids. That is the only reason I have to leave. I prefer, he was wanting to get his memories about, and they're like, you gonna forget your kids? You, yeah. you, don't forget your kids? you know, you know, yeah. you know how this is how much Charles was having a good time because she even says it's like it's been a year since we he's been up here with us. It has been a year. This man hasn't even called, left the email. <laughs> like, he's like, hey, I'll get to it. I'll get to it. They yeah, got it. They about got being it. Alive. He never told anybody anything. Yet he's like, wait, y'all died. Wait, I gotta go back now. Things are a problem. Yo, he, he hasn't even right. psychically checked on them. <laughs> Charles is in there, dog. Charles is having a good old time. He's having a blast, like, yo. <laughs> Did y'all notice, though? It wasn't until he went to the astral plane that he actually felt like something. He had no idea 
what was going on on Earth until he went to the astral plane because he was yeah. like, wait, I'm better than this. I don't need to listen to y'all. I need y'all to come listen to me. And then he was like, wait a minute, Gavin's dead. My children of the Adam are dead. And he went like, yo, I got to go back home. That part was a little jarring because it's like, how did you not feel that immediately? You know what I mean? And and did you notice something else, y'all? He only saw Gambit. Which, he only saw Gambit. Which goes to Mike's previous thought, which is Leech may have took Magneto's powers away and Ooh. saved Magneto's life. Because they're like Omega level threat eliminated, but like he took his powers away to make him not seem like an Omega level threat. Mm. So Mike... Mike might be right. No, Mike is right. Magneto has to be alive. Because if he saw Gambit and he has a closer psychic connection to Eric, yeah. Magneto's alive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. Because he would have said something. He would have mm -hmm. absolutely said something before all that ended. You're right. Yeah. He's got to be alive. I, I did like that, Gavin, when, when he's like, uh, when they're like kind of like squabbling and stuff and Charles falls on the ground. He's like, yo, what am I doing? Y'all got me. Y'all yeah. got me twisted. Time I'm out. We're going to my. We're going to yeah. my home court. And then I love that. That Yo, I could have watched that. Could have been a whole episode for me. That whole Charles and Stand By Me slash Mr. Feeney teaching school. <laughs> and like, like I loved it. I lo and then they're like, Mr. he's like, Feeney. raise your hand. He's like, yes, Mr. Xavier. <laughs> like, dog, he, he did. Broke. He was like, if you have a question, raise your hand. Like, yes, we don't operate like that in my classroom. Like he did much in the apple and standing up. He was yeah. flexing on him real hard. He broke down racism, mm -hmm. classism, like intense capitalism. He broke it down with the billboard in like a minute. Yeah. And like made yeah. it like really understandable. And just like line. broke it down. What did he say? He's like, coexistence is messy. Yeah. Or something like that. Yeah. Like, yeah. I love that line. That was Brother the Martin. exact words. Yeah. Brother Martin, right there. Yeah, yeah, I mean, but, Martin Luther King, but it's just, it's just <laughs> the way that Professor X broke it down so easily, like yeah. a teacher. Yeah. Right? And like from yeah. a place of like yeah. deep pain, but like still understanding, like the actor did a phenomenal job because I could feel the pain in explaining it. And like, like, I completely understand what this is. And I understand how painful it is to be the ones who are being knocked down. Yeah. But yet it's so important for me to explain this to you so you get it, even though you'll never fully understand how painful it is to be the ones that you're cutting down. The actor cut the actor did it. I yeah, in a minute was able to like capture that feeling and project and share it out. And I think and they so. touched on, you know, we talked about this with uh Genosha a little bit. No matter where they are, people are gonna people. This mm. is like one of the biggest empires in the galaxy, and they still got the same issues that are going on on Earth. They're going on on a ghetto planet Earth. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> the same issues, classism, <laughs> discrimination, uh, prejudice, and it's it's just like these unescapable, uh, I don't know what word I'm looking for, but these, these emotions, mm. these thoughts, these uh, social constructs cannot be escaped. No matter where you go, yeah. Can can we can we jump into it? Because when, honestly, I had when we talked about Genosha last episode, and I didn't realize millions had died. Seeing Storm's face hurt, like actually hurt. Yeah, she seemed so upset and so hurt about what happened. I was, I actually was a little like choked up. I was like, oh my gosh, yeah. like. You, you She's really, really feeling that. You know what I mean? Yeah. You get the sense that everyone, even the X-Men, they may have issue on how Genosha may have started. They may not even fully agree with who's running it, but they all wanted it to work. Yeah. yeah. Everyone yeah. was rooting for Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you saw the joy in Rogue and Gambit when they went to Genosha. Like, they're still not really fully like... I mean, the Hellfire Club is on the ca wow. quiet council. They try to kill the X Men <laughs> a few times. Like there's a, there's a there's a hesitancy right on like the quiet council. But Rogue and Gambit and Nightcrawler were like having mm -hmm. a ball yeah. in the first part of that episode. And real quick before we go to Storm, I just want to say I'm pretty sure Deathbird's actress is is a, is a woman of color. The okay. way that she said ghetto, and I swear. 
I know the actress rolled her neck. <laughs> I am confident. <laughs> that ghetto planet. I was like, ooh. <laughs> There's you some... think Death Bird is a... She's a woman of color for sure. Yeah. I, I could... Oh, we're going to have to look it up. There, there's All so right. much tone in the, the cartoon colors and the tattoos. That's a that's a woman of color. Yeah. Let's, let's bet. I've, I've been on exactly. All right. All right. Well, we got to check it out. So... There you go, brother. I got you. <laughs> so, um, Storm. Storm got her powers back. She is mm -hmm. back in her original suit. Uh, lavish. Just lavish. We've, so, we've never seen this Storm in this animated universe wear her original suit. It, so, this is her started. original comics? This is her Can original I comic man? suit. Kind of like the other one. I mean, I get it. I get it. I bet a lot of people are probably going to, like, eat me alive because of this, but, like, and the the, it's the original it's the original comic suit fine no but i like, think you're talking about the all white you're talking about the all white outfit right yeah i kind of dug the all oh. white but um it's still a good but so this is her her debut comic suit okay all right hey, well so uh this is what <laughs> i'll say it's like her it's, it is her iconic look um the white outfit is very popular so jim lee i believe designed that white outfit mm -hmm. jim lee is I would argue one of the greatest, if not the greatest comic book illustrator of all time. So when he, like, everything we've seen X-Men related, for the most part, is Jim Lee's illustration design. So you, more than likely, you go on to, like, if you see everybody else's original uniforms, you're going to be like, eh. But yeah. the ones that you, like, grew up with are the ones designed by, like, arguably the, the best of them all. So... Okay. Just to let you know, I kind of like that one too. But Storm got some dope <laughs> outfits. Mark, Storm got some dope outfits. She like don't never look bad, just... bro. She don't never look bad. <laughs> no, Storm I never got... said she looked bad. But like, go, go Google Storm outfits. <laughs> this is, that's going to that's gonna do something for somebody. <laughs> True. <laughs> that's going to turn Honestly, into a long like, night for somebody. Google and Storm Google outfits. Full... <laughs> yeah, that's she a problem. Back... That's a problem. She for went someone. Magneto though. She did go Magneto with the full locks of hair, but uh, if she had kept the one little like strip, the mohawk, I would have still, yeah, the mohawk. People love Storm's then... mohawk, man. And I got, and like some internet folks so got unique, real upset with you know me. What I mean? People yeah. love Storm mohawk like a little too much. Oh no, they were like, but, how but dare you not so like the mohawk? Unique. It was so, so mad at me, yo. <laughs> <laughs> but think, think about the rest of X Men. Like the first person you would have thought of to have a, a mohawk would have been Wolverine. Yes. I came with them claws like, ah, whoops. Like, you know what I mean? Like, he would have <laughs> been the first person you thought of. But How many black have women have you seen with a mohawk? Holly Berry. Mohawk. And you saw Holly Berry because she was playing Storm. She was playing Storm. <laughs> wait, wait. Wasn't the girl from uh, uh, Soul Food? Oh, oh, she was gorgeous. Did she have a mohawk or was it a faux hawk? Wait, who? The light skin joint that was... Married to uh, Boris Kojo, didn't she have a, a little design? She did. Which... She did have a mohawk. She did. She rocked she did. that well. See, she come did. on. And she come rocked on. it well. Two. Now think of every other hairstyle you've seen black women have. I was about to go back to Halle Berry again. <laughs> think of every other hairstyle you've seen black women have, and Storm never had that. But she consistently <laughs> has that mohawk. That's all I was trying to say. And the yeah. internet ate me alive. Yeah. <laughs> How dare you? No, you're you're trying to make a woke statement. I'm like, <laughs> I know black women. They change Shut their up. hairstyle up. Shut up. You don't know different anybody. I, I, I've only seen <laughs> black women rock the mohawk twice. <laughs> you haven't just named them. But I've seen it literally every other hairstyle multiple times, <laughs> and Storm never have it. You know what I'm saying? Hey, uh, that's all I'm trying to say. And the internet's still gonna get mad at me. But that's all I was trying hey, to say. <laughs> with uh, but with this Storm segment, <laughs> I uh, I was like, dang, this could have been a whole episode in itself. I I I do like the we're moving right. This whole series is moving, and and like I there's things that I wish we spend more time on, but I feel like. Like, okay, that is, like, they know, like, that is exactly enough what we need. Then we can move on to the next beat. Yeah, I will say, I felt like I didn't get enough resolution with the rival. The rival was kind of come and gone very quickly. Is that the, the demon? The, 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 the that big Yeah, it starts with an A, though. Like an 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 ancestry, anarchist, something like that. I thought it was the, that wasn't the rival? No, I don't think it was the rival. 
So about the, no. the demon, I have a question. So I forget where I saw this, but don't we find out that uh, when Nightcrawler teleports, doesn't he actually go through another dimension? And there's like yeah. a bunch of like creepy stuff in there. Is that where that yeah. thing's from? I have no idea. Why, what uh, makes you think it's from there? I, I don't I was like, oh, maybe it's from because I, I just I just heard that. I remember hearing that somewhere like Nightcrawler goes through a dimension and there's like all kinds of monsters and stuff. And I was like, well. Maybe this is from it. The adversary. The adversary. Okay. The adversary. Adversary. That's what I was wondering yeah. about. I felt like that was more just her like waking up her own power based on what Forge actually did. Yeah. I did like the adversary trying to like talk to him out of leaving Forge. Like, girl, look, look what he did to you. And and he ain't got no job. Like he's living in this shack. <laughs> like you don't need him, and Storm's like, no, no, <laughs> just you like the lander in space, the money villain, judgmental, <laughs> sedity <laughs> kingdom. No, but that was great <laughs> stuff, man. And how it, um, it, it again with these insults when, when, when the adversary had Storm in the little like claustrophobic thing, mm -hmm. and it's like, you know, you're looking for, you know, are, are you looking for something with this monotone family? I'm like, dang, good luck, <laughs> or. I that heard was, that part yeah. too. Yeah, I like that. That was yeah. deep. She said the quiet part loud. <laughs> like, you the only one. You the only one. You the one. only one. <laughs> there ain't no other. There ain't no other melanated mutants who need protection. Just you, Storm. Yeah. You just so happen to be on those He's mega level all the scenes, And you look bro. like a goddess. <laughs> And you're the only one. Okay. <laughs> Planting all the seeds and storms. That's got that's gotta be a tough pill to swallow. Why you're claustrophobic in a little <laughs> psychic casket? That's gotta be a tough pill to swallow. <laughs> like you ooh, and you called her your sister? Mm, okay. Yeah. Sure <laughs> your sister, huh? <laughs> sure did. <laughs> Come to find out it wasn't even G. She needs to go to Wakanda. All right. Yo. Oh, <laughs> uh, so we did hear that storm call uh forage her love. So yeah. Assuming that they did, you know, reconcile the fact that he shot a dampener or he created the dampener that, you know, took her powers away. But I, I guess this is affirming that they are together and, and that the relationship uh, is thriving. You don't think so, Gavin? Uh, look like to me that they're together. It look like to me too. Hey, hey, look, look, look. This person that I've been with for a week or so has almost died. And this person that I've been with for a week or so gave me my powers back through me awakening myself after his failed object. I love him too. You sound like I, the advocator, you know dog. <laughs> you sound I feel, I, I'm just saying, I feel like this is more just him being a part. I don't think she's in love with Forge. I don't think, I don't mm. think she loves It's him. just a trauma bond. I think, yes. That, probably what thank it is. you. Yes, that's, probably what it is. that's the word I was looking for. We want to believe, though, Gavin. We want to believe in the love. I mean, but she rejected him already. Remember, his machine didn't work, little man. I, I could build you anything you want. She's like, mm. and she didn't. Only thing he built was a, a road to them getting on horses yeah. and then figuring their lives out after the fact. She was like, well, "That's cute. That's cute." But <laughs> she, he did yeah. use his 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 what do you call it, desert magic to take the uh, adversary away. No, so, speaking on that, I that think another, another, put another check in my theory of the '97 joining the MCU. That magic I, looked a lot like the Doctor Strange magic. Hundred percent, hundred percent. It looked exactly like it. it. Did. Just it like faded it. away when he let his hands go, which has happened before. I agree. That was their introductory to say the magic is coming to oh. our what? What's what's the name of the Earth? Like, what's the Earth number? 616. that? Six one six. Six one six. Yes, they're mm -hmm. coming to Earth. Six one six. I agree. I really do. Two things with that. One, that is in the comics. Like Forge does have mystic powers. Like he he's cool with the shaman, and he used to practice, but he like stopped practicing for some traumatic reason. So he does actually have powers. It's not connected to his mutant powers. It's just him like being a shaman. Mm -hmm. So that's like one. The other thing is, what was I gonna say? I don't know if I think. Oh well, here's here's the thing. Here's a multiverse rule, just for for y'all to know, because I have read way too many comic books. Every universe thinks they're the main universe. Literally, mm -hmm. every universe says they're Earth six one six. Right. Like the MCU thinks they're six one six. X Men ninety seven thinks they're six one six. The main comic books think they're six one six. Just like in the DC universe, 
every earth says they're earth one mm -hmm. every earth says they're earth one so here's the thing we're already in like this is a multiverse and everyone thinks they're the so there is no like main marvel universe you know yeah. what i'm saying because they think they're already in the main marvel universe. i just thought it was something funny but go ahead i have i have two questions one because this is a loaded question without actually seeing it do you think deadpool can clear that up two do you think Marvel will actually reconcile that or just pull people in when they need to? Because they did and are going to, or excuse me, they are finishing up their Secret Wars film right now, which has had a few of the older actors, Scarlett Johansson, Robert Downey Jr., you know, like all these folks involved. Do you think they're going to just like, you know, do that or that? I, that's well, what I'm curious about. Well, I'm not the comic book expert, expert, but I would say at at the end of Loki, I think Loki the, Loki, the way Loki ended season two was genius because it gives you kind of like a, a a cool way to reset, right? Mm -hmm. A cool way to reset things. And then with the previews of Deadpool, t uh, Deadpool, uh, it looks like the TVA is involved. Right. Like, yeah. Exactly right. from Loki. So like that has to mean something. Right. And you know, it just makes a lot of sense to me. And then uh Nels, <clears throat> we talked about this with the when they announced the cast for Fantastic Four. Yeah. I don't know if you saw it, Gavin. It it looks very retro, right? Yes, it looks it like it's like in the sixties or something. And I was thinking, yeah. I talked to Nels about this, and when in the MCU were we in the sixties when Tony and and Cap went back to get the Pym particles, and right. Tony met his. So right. I was like, "Yo, what if that's how the Fantastic Four movie starts with Captain America going back to put everything like when he took the Tesseract back and all that stuff?" Yeah, and then we clash into the fan like Reed Richards is working at that base, and that's Whoa. how the Fantastic Four starts. And then you know the time travel, what have you. We'll go, you know, it, boom, MCU. <laughs> that's that's dope. I mean, did did y'all see the uh, the Marvels? I've not yeah. watched the Marvels yet. So Marvels. I mean, that tracks. <clears throat> like that was actually a very interesting ending. And but I will say they did say that Kelsey Grammer only did the uh, voice of Beast. He's not going to come back as Beast. Like, yeah. Oh, wait, yeah. I did see the the end credit. And they lied to Beast? us before. So I, I can't, you can't believe looks, anything. He looks like Beast from 97. He does, but he's so much more CGI, yeah. which, you know, and this is a whole, you know, I hope y'all have a whole nother conversation, which I'll come back for about practical effects versus CGI, because oh, yeah, Christopher, for Nolan, another day. <laughs> for another Christopher day. Nolan is not a Michael Bay. You feel me? Like they're, they are very opposite ends of the spectrum. But I digress. It's My it's funny. Being, it's funny you say that. Hold on, Mark. <laughs> what do you say about Christopher Nolan? He's the rich man's Michael Bay. Come on, yo. <laughs> he, he spends time building out freaking scientists who will build out projects that will explode and or evolve in real time. Let, I'll give you all this. Hold up, because I know this is a different subject. Steven <laughs> Spielberg in Jurassic Park had some of the most amazing practical effects, not because they put a whole T-Rex on screen, but because they built T-Rex face and arms out of nothing. Yeah. And it looked like he was eating the goat. I will, if we had more of that, we would all be more impressed with the, the cinematic anything with practical yeah, effects. Because it's it's light hitting an object. It's it's actual tangible yeah. thing. But like, I'll yes. always champion practical, but Nolan is fine wine and Michael Bay is binge drinking. And sometimes, <laughs> sometimes you like to just you like, and have a fun Saturday night. And there ain't nothing wrong with that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Touche. Hey. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Ain't nothing wrong yeah, with that. The best you know analogy ever, yo. It, it tracks. <laughs> it tracks. Hey, hey. And you know what? Back to the X-Men episode. Ooh. So, y'all. <laughs> Any other things you want to cover before we That's wrap hilarious. things up? <laughs> wait, wait, okay. Um, oh, wait, oh, wait, oh, oh, Mark, go ahead, Mark. Go no, ahead. no, 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 go ahead. I, I was thinking two things. Professor X, because I was hoping you would talk to me about this. Professor X is back. I knew he was not going to be dead. 
That's the one thing. Yeah. My other thing is the Shi'ar Empire, that is too big an entity for him to just leave and them have no consequence for anything that happens. So it seems like to me they are still setting up the sequences for what we saw for future like flash like imagery of Wolverine and Storm and uh, Bishop. Remember when they were like trying to treat Wolverine when he was like dying and then you would see his body as like that exoskeleton and all adamantium mm. and they were trying to keep him alive. I think there's no choice we have. We're still barreling towards that. And this is just the interweaved stories that are very deep into what that's going to be because Gambit still looks the same. Bishop has never changed. Charles is still there. Wolverine is absolutely still there. All of the elements of what those flash forwards used to be are still there. I feel like they're building us up to those moments that we haven't seen yet. And you're we're saying just like we're shocked. You're saying that we're like we've already seen like the last two episodes yes, of the season. That's exactly what I'm saying. We've been seeing yes. like like we've uh, seen clips the of it, series finale. And we're leading the lead. Yeah, and we're getting to the lead. Like all of this is the lead up, but all the flashbacks are like the last two. That's gonna be yes. that that will they, be amazing. They, they are giving us amazing. the finale and we have not seen it yet, but we've already seen Through it. All these we're psychic just flashbacks. It yeah. Well it, yes. it feels it's, Oh, yeah, that. like it. That's funny you say that because I was when watching this, I was like, this feels very Game of Thrones in the sense of when Game of Thrones, you know, you had all these like intricate story arcs all spread across this world, and you're like, how are all these going to like merge mm -hmm. together? But they did eventually. They all, you know, say what you will, how Game of Thrones ended, but all those like people and characters, they came to one mm -hmm. one point, and it's like I think that's where we're going, and all these little. Mr. Sinister, I don't think it's an accident that in the opening credits they you see Cable and Apocalypse right. like yeah. you know the right. little the little um flashes when Gene saw the Phoenix and stuff like all right. that's just slowly It's like it's all together. leading up to this. Yeah. Yeah. Which is nuts cuz I'm saying. like that's some big like that's that's like mega that's, level yep. story arcs and they're just all yeah. like jamming into the first season <laughs> that's exactly what i was saying because remember nils i was i was telling you i was like yo they're not showing charles xavier in the beginning of the opening credits like he's dead he's gonna come back like mm. and here he is you know what i'm saying like nightcrawler was not in this episode but if you go to this most previous yeah it had episode, nightcrawler on it Nightcrawler was all over that jungle. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, he was in the Gambit title. He was there. in the title uh, crew. Yeah. And Gambit wasn't there. But, yeah. But you see what I'm saying? It's like, low key how I'm keeping track of back. who's alive or not. But yeah. Magneto didn't. No, Magneto wasn't no, there. No, Magneto either. wasn't in the. In the so credits. I'm like, all right, these are the folks who are. <laughs> but Magneto was still there. Magneto was still there. No, no, no. In the in the title frame, they didn't have Magneto. Not in this episode. You and the X, yeah. the X thing? At he the was gone. He was and Gambit were gone. Yeah. Oh, dang. Yeah, those writers yeah. are very clever. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Okay, all right, y'all. Anything else? I can't nope. wait for for seven, dude. It's yeah, it's yeah. great. Uh, it's great wait, 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 Brother, I we haven't to the, gotten to the, the fire. You, I hear you. We will get to the end of the season and then we will have that conversation. <laughs> but for now, it's in the argument. <laughs> can't refute that. It's in the argument. And thank Hi. you all. Thank you. Thank you, Clyde. Thank you, Gav. And thank you, Popcorn, for listening. Uh, we have a new episode every month. You can find us on all social media at Pop Call Parent, P-O-P-C-U-L-T-P-A-R-E-N-T. -E Visit us at www.popcallparent.com. Become a member of the Pop Call at our Patreon, patreon.com backslash Pop Call Parent, where you can see all our full video episodes. Email us at popcallparent at gmail.com. Don't forget to rate us, review, and subscribe. And as always, join the cult. Hey.